Hi, Peter Brock here. I wanted to uh, show you a very interesting photograph here. Uh, and this photograph is available from us. But this is a really important history of the Daytona Coupe because it's the very first time that we ran the car at Daytona. And this particular photograph was taken just moments before the car exploded in flame. But let me give you a little background on it because this was the very first time we ever ran the Daytona. So everything was brand new for us and we didn't know what was gonna happen. We got down there and the car was extremely fast. It was so quick and fast that uh, the drivers who had never driven it before, the, all the testing was done originally by Ken Miles on it, who's Ken sitting right here. He was uh, uh, reassigned as the team manager for it. And instead we had uh, Bob Holbert who's in the car and Dave McDonald who's standing back here looking at what's going on. Anyway, we arrived down there. We didn't know what we were gonna do in terms of performance, but the car was so fast uh, that we were literally running away from the Ferraris. So we brought the car back in and uh, decided to cut the RPM down. Uh, Bob did say he was just pulling away from the Ferraris so fast. And so they cut the RPM down and he, then McDonald got on the car and he went out and he was as faster than the Ferraris. So we cut it down even more. At that point, we cut the RPM down about oh, 0800 from the red line. And we decided to do a, uh, a test on the fuel and at that point, we discovered that we were running about 20 to 25% better than we'd ever done with the Roadster. So that was one of the great advantages of the coupe shape over the Roadster, not just the top speed where we'd increased it from 160 miles an hour to almost 200 miles an hour. So when we arrived down at Daytona, everything was going really, really well for us. And we were probably seven or eight laps in the lead you know, halfway through the event. This is a 2000 kilometer event. And uh, uh, Bob came in, you can see him in the car there. He says, you know, I've got a lot of smoke in the cockpit, uh, I've got a problem. And the problem is you can see it right here, there's a lot of grease and stuff over the back end. What happened is that the seals had broken on the differential and the back end was coming out and we knew we were gonna probably lose the rear end on the car. So. Our mechanics, Jim Culleton here, and here's Shelby talking to him through the window, is telling him to look, go out, run a few laps while we find the right grease for the back end. In the meantime, we'll put some 50 weight in the car to keep it going. And uh, that's what we did. One, the other thing in looking at the car is you can see that there's some, some wear right here on the front fender. When we were running on the banking up there, the car was touching the tires up in this area. So there's a lot going on in this picture of this history of the very first time we ran the car. At any rate, when we came back into the pits uh, to change this over, uh, you can see it's got a fuel filler on this side and had a fuel filler on that side. And uh, we had decided to refill the car with fuel. Carol was telling everybody to refuel the car in between the stops the way we normally did. But because the car only ran a few laps before it got called in to change the, uh, the oil in it. Uh, he hadn't realized that the tank had been topped up and he was telling Tom Graderix here with the fuel to refill the car. And they were trying to tell Carol, no, the car's already full. And he said, damn it, fill the car. So they did. The uh, fuel came out over the side, got down on the hot brakes and the whole thing went up in flames and essentially put us out of the race. And, uh, it was very, very disheartening because we were, we were well in the lead, going to win the race. It would have given us a huge amount of points toward the championship at the end. But uh, Carol was so angry with the situation. He said, no, we're going to quit. But the guys didn't want to quit. They said, no, Carol, we can, we can fix the burned wire. We, we can fix the differential. We can pull it out. We're so far in the lead that we can probably get back. And even if we get finished second or third, we'll get enough points and that'll really uh, help us at the end of the year. But uh, Carol pre prevailed and uh, we didn't run the car in the end. It turned out that if we'd had just the points, even from second or third place, we would have won the championship in the first year. As it was, we came in second by about six points down. But anyway, it's a great, great picture. Here's. Uh, Tony Webner, the guy that sponsored 
a car, really, because Goodyear put up the money for it. Uh, we've got Carol back here. We've got Bob Holbert. We've got Dan Gurney standing back here. We've got little Granny Collins, one of our chief mechanics down here. I mean, the whole Shelby crew is there in this picture. And uh, it really tells the story uh, about this very first race. And it's a great view of the car. So if you have a chance, this thing frames up really beautiful. If you're a Daytona fan, you'll really like it. So the, uh, the importance of this particular shot is, is that uh, it's one of the annual shots that's put out by the Shelby Museum uh, back in uh, the Denver, Colorado area. This was done in 2009. And uh, it, uh, as you'll see, it's a, one of several shots of Daytona history but uh, one of the most important ones. And we've got it available here online. You can get it from us directly, or if you have a chance to go back to the museum, uh, you can pick it up there. And if you want, let us know and I'll even sign it for you.